This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. To pray without ceasing is to maintain a constant attitude of dependence upon God. It's not to pray without ceasing to maintain prayer for 24 hours. It's to maintain a constant, consistent dependence upon God. This whole thing is about dependence upon God. Everything that happened in the Garden of Eden was over dependence upon God. And when they decided to eat of the fruit of that tree, when the devil said this one statement, you're like God, you'll be like God, they thought, well, praise, I don't need to depend on him because I'm going to be like him. No matter where you are on your personal journey, the Word of God can reach you. At work or simply needing to hear from the Lord, tune into World Changers every Sunday at 10 a.m. or restream at 2 p.m., 6 p.m., and 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Text Watch Now to 51555 or visit worldchangers.org for more information about services and stream times. We're in this together. No matter where we are, we are World Changers. See you online. This is your world, so let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know you love is here to stay. Oh, it's time we live a new life. Let us love shine bright in you. We're saved by His grace, so we embrace your love today. Amen. Amen. All right, let's go to number four. Let's go to number four. I want to get this done today. All right, so here's the fourth uh, <clears throat> uh, subject that's being taught in the Bible that teaches us complete dependence upon God. Um, multiplied admonitions to pray are repeated reminders of the believer's dependence upon God. Admonitions or counsels over and over again, urging you, you need to pray about something. What is this prayer thing? It's, it's not, prayer is not this, um, you know, this, this, it's this little magical thing you do and to make God do something. That's, that's not, that's not, that's not, there are people praying all the time and, 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 and because of his mercy and grace, maybe some things break loose, or maybe because of the prayer of other people, but it, 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 this is about depending on him. It's like I'm praying because I depend on him. I'm not praying because I'm desperate. That's what most people do. I'm pray I pray because I depend on him. I pray. It's like I got to pray, not because somebody's making me pray, but because I have submitted myself to him. I depend on him, and part of my dependence on him moves me to pray. It moves me to communication. Look at these scriptures with me. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and 17. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, and then 1 Timothy 2, 8. Let's look at about four scriptures on, on prayer and really talk about this. This is, this is so important. I pray because I depend on God. I pray because I depend on God. I don't pray because I'm, I'm looking for something, some magic, hat, uh, magic, magic thing to happen. I pray because I depend on God, all right? I depend on Him. I depend, I'm, I'm not separating my prayer from depending on God. Well, I'm going to pray because I'm going to make something happen. When it happens, I'll tell people, I prayed, that's why that happens. No, 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 no. Prayer is, is a part of my curriculum of complete dependence upon God. All right, look at verse 17, very short. He says, pray without ceasing. That simply means don't cease to pray as it demonstrates your dependence upon God. He doesn't say pray without ceasing, meaning once you start praying, just pray all your life without a break. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about don't cease to pray as a result of your complete dependence upon God. I get that. 
I get that, that if I say I'm dependent upon God, then I'm going to pray. When I say I'm dependent upon God, no matter what people think about speaking in tongues, I'm going to pray in the Holy Ghost because the Bible says, I'm going to pray in my most holy faith, speaking in tongues. That's what the Bible says. And he says, when you do that, you build yourself up, spirit, soul, and body. So I do that. I'm not going to do it to offend anybody, but I, I, that's a part of my dependent on God, especially when I just can't figure nothing out. I can't figure out even how to ask God about this situation. I go to praying in tongues. Somebody says, how long are you going to pray until I, until I get peace? Until, until there's a peace that comes over to me that says, you good, and, I, I, and I'm, I, that's a part of my dependent on God. That my, that's a part of my dependent on God. You know, yesterday, uh, I, was, I was sitting and in, in, in getting some treatment, and, and I thought, well, I'm not doing anything. Let me go ahead and just pray. Why? Because I depend on God. There are all kinds of opportunities for you to pray. Somebody says, well, I ain't got time to pray for an hour. Who said you had to pray for an hour? The Bible. No, it didn't. <laughs> the, Jesus asked the question. He says, could you not pray with me for an hour? He was asking the disciples the ones he said to pray. And he says, you couldn't pray for me even an hour? And then somebody else took that and said, see, you got to pray for an hour. Yeah, I'm guilty. I taught a whole series on how you got to pray for an hour. <laughs> Until I got tired one morning and went in there and, and I said, oh boy, here we go. I sure ain't looking forward to this. God like me neither. <laughs> you ever went in another kind of prayer and you're praying, oh Lord, I thank you. Oh God, I, I thank you. Thank you for my mama, my daddy, my... And you look at the clock, ain't but a minute went by. Like, God, no. <laughs> no, this is a part of me depending upon God. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 2 and 8. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and, and verse 8. We do this because this is a part of our complete package, our complete dependence upon God. He says, I will therefore that men pray everywhere lifting up holy hands without wrath or without doubt. He said, that's, that's my will. I want, I want them to pray. I want men to pray everywhere. He said, that's my ultimate will. I want men to, to receive my grace. I want to be able to teach all. I want to, that, that's my will. If, if he's telling us to pray, it's got to have something to do. I pray because I depend on God. I communicate with him. And he talks to me. I, depend, I, have to, I have to hear from him. You mean to tell me God speaks to you? Yeah. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. Glory be to God. He expects for you to hear. Don't let the world talk you out of the truths of this gospel of grace. Yes, I expect to hear from God. That's, that's, that's the game changer in our lives. There should be things going on in the lives of Christians that when, when unsaved people look at you, they should say, how'd you get that to happen? You ought to say, well, uh, God told me. You mean God speaks to you? Yeah, you ought to try it. Lift your hands up. I'll lead you to Jesus and introduce you to him. Yeah, when we walk in the room, the atmosphere ought to change because there's an anointing on every last one of you. You're not, just, you're not just Christians. God lives in you. And get ready. Everything's failing. This is a big setup. This is a big setup. God's setting this whole thing up so he can show out in you. He, now listen, he's doing no different than he did Abraham. I'm going to wait till he turns 100. I'm going to wait till she turns 90. And then at the set time, somebody shout set time. set time. Get that tape from Wednesday. At the set time, He's going to show up and do what he does. And I am telling you, this is going on our six months of teaching on the gospel of grace, and God is setting you up so that when the news announces this is not failing, or, or this is failing, and that's failing, and oh, the stock market, and oh, your, 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 your 401k, oh, and all, oh, uh, it won't bother you one bit. Why? Because you have made your mind up that I completely depend on God anyway. I 
I knew you weren't going to have no food, and God already showed me what to do. I knew your systems were going to fail, but God's already spoken to me, hallelujah. If he can speak to a Joseph and prepare them for a hard time, he can speak to you and I and prepare us. Get ready, church. Get ready. Something awesome, something magnificent is about to take place in you and in me. Praise God. Part of this is making a decision to live in complete dependence upon God. It's a huge deal. It's a huge deal. Look at uh, this next verse, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 18. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 18. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. You see, in prayer, one expresses a need that he himself is unable to satisfy. And then he acknowledges dependence upon God to supply that which is needed. And so I go to prayer as we do. Have no idea how to handle this, Lord, or something that was brought to my attention that I know I can't do by myself. And I go before you and say, Lord, I need you to help me with this. I realize today that setting myself aside was a lot more than what I thought, and I, I need you to help me with this. And so I know you love me, so I'm not questioning whether or not you will be a very present help, but I want to make sure that you know that I depend on you. I depend on you, I rely on you, I trust you, and I thank you, Lord, that as we start this journey, that I'll gather wisdom from this, and, uh, and you'll begin to walk with this. Now, now listen to this. This is a key statement for today. The essence of prayer is acknowledgement of helplessness coupled with confidence in God to supply the need. The essence of prayer is the, is the acknowledgement of helplessness. When was the last time you went to God as someone that says, I, I can't do this without you? And, and, and I used to just think I do that when something big and significant happens. I'm finding that I'm doing that like every day just with my life and the things I have to do in my life. I don't have to struggle with this all my life. I don't have to carry this all my life. I, I, I go to God and I go to him not as someone who doesn't need help, but I go to him clearly saying, I am acknowledging that I am helpless in this area. But I'm also acknowledging the confidence in you to supply what I need. That's changed my life. It, it, it's, it's a humbling thing for me to keep reminding myself that I am not all that. You either. <laughs> Some of you think you're all that. No, you're not. No, you're not. There's something so powerful that happens. When you pray, I believe the most powerful prayer around, help me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Glory to God. I'm feeling moody today, Lord. Help me. I'm a little honorary. Help me. And I trust that you have the supply that I need. And just getting up from that place of communicating with God, there's a strength that's released upon you that says, I have a God who loves me. I have a God who can help me. I'm never alone. And you walk away from that place and you declare, and never again will I declare that I'm broken because I'm in relationship with a mender. I'm in a relationship with a master potter. Go rid of God. He'll take the good clay and mix it with the bad clay and make a masterpiece. You got to go in the kill in order to shine. 
<laughs> but it's going to be all right. Nobody in here knows what nobody in here has really gone through. You might know about what they've gone through, but until you can, can read the insides and, and the battles of their mind, and you don't know what they have gone through. It's not just as simple as you would like it to be. And I tell you, you look around you, you see a bunch of miracles sitting around who God has helped. God has helped me. Somebody say, what's going on? God has helped me. I've been helped for, by, the, by the Almighty God. And then you say like they did in Abraham's day, is there anything too hard for God? And you know how we are. I can be a witness. Let me be a witness. I think and I praise God huh, that I went to sleep last night, but I hadn't slept in one week. Huh. I think and I praise God. Huh. I didn't have nothing to eat, but I looked up in the back, in the real, real back, and I found a can of poking beans. I think and I pray. You got to learn how to thank God. If you're going to enter into this time of prayer and depend on God, you got to start thanking God before you see the manifestation. You got to start shouting before anything ever happens. You got to start living that life life of thanksgiving. Father, I thank you. Now, let me show you where that gets you. Let me show you where that gets you. To pray without ceasing is to maintain a constant attitude of dependence upon God. It's not to pray without ceasing to maintain prayer for 24 hours. It's to maintain a constant, consistent dependence upon God. This whole thing is about dependence upon God. Everything that happened in the Garden of Eden was over dependence upon God. And when they decided to eat of the fruit of that tree, when the devil said this one statement, you're like God, you'll be like God, they thought, well, praise, I don't need to depend on him because I'm going to be like him. Everything's about that. It's almost like we almost missed the whole boat because of religion. This Christianity is not about the show. It's not about me figuring out a way where I can show out how anointed I am. Give me that line, that line, that line. No, 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 I, I depend on God. In fact, I depend on God so much, I don't feel the need to do those things like I used to do them. I still do them, but I depend on God. God has done some amazing things and is doing some, some amazing things. And that's, I want to meet him. I want to meet him knowing that he's, he's meeting one of his children and say, son, you really depended on me. Yeah, Lord, I'm here because I depended on you. What a ride. It's going to happen one day. I'm, I'm just not waiting till the last minute to try to get it together. I must be, it's going to be eternity. I'm not, be, I'm not playing church and I'm going to, this is going to be over with one day. You're going to die one day. And as stupid as this world is, my prayer is that you'll be protected so your life is not snuffed out before it's time. That's the blessing I pray over you, world changes, that you will not die before your time. If they fire off a bullet, it shall not hit you. A thousand, oh, glory to God, shall fall at thy side, 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come through you. Why? You depend on God. A constant attitude of depending on God. Gosh, Pastor, why are you hollering? This stuff is so real to me. There are lots of things that people play with, but this one thing about, you know, what's going to happen when I die? Nah, we ain't, we ain't playing with that. You know, it's an eerie thing to prepare your life, your insurance, your will, your ceremony. You know, I just finished doing that not too long ago, and it's weird. But it's pretty simple. Basically, when I die, throw me in a box, put me in the thing. I don't, nobody needs to be there. Just put me in the, in the hole. And if y'all want to have something afterwards, that's up to y'all. But I'm not even going to be here. I don't care. <laughs> Paul said, what I, 
I fought a good fight, and I kept the faith. Well, well who's going who's gonna to take her after you go? Well, I don't plan on going anywhere for a minute. I mean, like a long minute. <laughs> I want to see what it feels like preaching grace at 100. <laughs> I met some people re recently, they said, Crippled Doll. He said, oh, man, I thought you were dead. I'm like, what? <laughs> No, nah, bruh. <laughs> I depend on God. Help me now. Help me. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is the life of Christianity, man. It's, it's the world seeing and watching us depend on, on God, not ourselves. We're not trying to be like the world and try to outdo them. <clears throat> I was looking at a roll that I was, you know, practicing, and I looked down at the roll and I was playing the part of a police chief. And this was a little different because it had some, uh, some cussing words in it. I was like, wow. You know the three-letter cussing words. I said, so we, will you want me to do that? He said, yeah. And so I tried, and I'm like, ooh. I am not going to lose my ministry that I walked in for 41 years for a three-letter cussing word. Now, some people get it. They say, oh, well, that's just acting. Not church folks. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. He cussed for real. I said, I won't say nothing in the role I ain't said at church. <laughs> but it was just something about, you know, I, I, I depended on God so much in areas of my life and character. Uh, that is never going to be important to me. It was, a, it was a quick test. And I thought, nah, it ain't worth it. Get somebody else to do it. I don't care. Now listen to this. Go to Ephesians chapter 5 and 20. I think we'll finish this. We got 12 minutes. Somebody said, you go by the clock? Yeah, y'all got something to do. If I don't go by the clock, I can't stay up here a long time. People be like, ooh, the pastor don't ever shut up, do it? <laughs> no, I stick with the clock. When that clock go off, I'm off. Well, what if you don't finish it? Well, ask the Holy Ghost. He'll tell you the rest of it. <laughs> That's why we want this relationship with God. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20. He said, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Giving thanks always for God. Uh, and so here's the one, the only one who is, who, who is completely dependent on God, only one who is completely dependent on God can give thanks always for all things. We're talking about all the things of God. We give thanks in all things, but not for all things in the other scripture. So there is no finer expression of dependence upon God than in giving thanks. Now, this is important. This is an amazing expression of dependence upon God when you give thanks. Listen to this carefully now. Prayer acknowledges one's dependence upon God in times of need. Prayer acknowledges one's dependence upon, dependence upon God in a time of need. Thanksgiving, however, acknowledges dependence when the need is satisfied. Thanksgiving acknowledges dependence when the need is satisfied. Prayer acknowledges your dependence upon God in a time of need. One is acknowledging dependence on God in the time of need. The other one, Thanksgiving, is acknowledging dependence on God after the need is satisfied. 